Johnny's just uh, finishing off some prep work, scotching around the switch plate area that didn't get prepped prior to uh, the plates coming off. Now using some transfer paper, we uh, transfer paper out the whole side over the fine line tape design that we've laid out already. The less pieces you break this into, keep it complete as you can, is going to make it easier in the long run. Squeegeeing out all the wrinkles in the uh, air holes, any bubbles, just trying to get as flat as possible helps when you come and cut out the design later. So the wider you roll, the easier it is, but anyway, obviously if you've got a six foot roll it's going to be a bit trippy. Just getting up the top area now, covering the whole side, squeegee out everything. And now we come back with the X-Acto knife, we're cutting out the design, we're going to re remove the transfer paper from where we're going to add our paint. Always a good idea to use a really sharp blade, that way you don't need to put so much pressure on the knife and it avoids cutting into your painted surface. Be careful when you peel this off too, if you haven't quite cut through you can rip the paper into an area which will cause a blow through so just got to be cautious just don't go 100 mile an hour and pull it out and end up making more work for yourself. Coming around the rivet areas I like to just uh, cut the tape around there and put another bit of tape on there to avoid any blow throughs. I go around and double check everything make sure there's no tape sitting up that's going to cause a blow through area especially on white it's really hard to keep white clean so you got to do all you can. And now with pre cleaning it, using a wax grease remover, going around, wipe you wipe on the, the wet wax grease remover, cleaning the surface, and then uh, come back and wipe off the uh, wax grease remover. Now Johnny's air drying it, air blowing it out, making sure there's no solvents behind the rivets. Now we're going to mix our colour in. This is a mixture of black and Orion Silver, House of Colour, uh, using metallics on the whole piece and this pure silver is going to act as somewhat of a white so we have to custom mix the colours behind it to make sure that the silver is going to be the lighter of all the colours. Let's stir it up properly, make sure that all the pigments are around. Probably a good idea to get a custom pour. Prior to adding base colour, Rich has gone ahead and is going ahead and he's putting a sealer down. Just helps with the adhesion quality, especially painting on uh, old paint that we're not sure exactly what the paint is and how it's going to key on. So if you get a sealer, it helps with the adhesion. Also over the stainless Rivets. There's not a lot of stuff there to key on except for uh, some scratch sand marks so this will just give us an extra security blanket. He covers the whole surface as he goes. He comes back with the colour. First coat's just a, a transparent tack coat. He'll come back with a uh, more solid colour after that. Right, now Johnny's just tacking the whole thing, getting it prepped for uh, Rich to come and put some intercoat clear on it. Uh, and that'll, the reason we use intercoat clear, especially over a metallic, is to avoid any pulling of the metallic or when we mask on top of it. It's a good protective thing and a good general rule is to always put intercoat clear on top of your metallics before you do any sort of graphics on there. Yeah. 
Right, after Rich's intercoat cleared it and it's dried, what I'm doing now is I'm coming back and I'm masking the outer fangs of the tribal because I want to paint behind them first, paint the shadowed areas and the design behind them. So I'm just back masking these at the moment. And then we'll come back and uh, do the rear design. I'm just dulling the tape down here to uh, reduce any pull off uh, effect that the adhesion of the tape might have on the paint below. Just a little security blanket, there's no harm in, in doing it. It can only help, help you, it can only work for you. Just detach it enough to, to give it a, a little bit of a... Yeah. Right, now we're starting to do the shading. I'm coming in with my darker colours and lighter colours. Basically, I'm just filling in the areas behind the uh, foreground of the, of the tribal. I'll come back and join up things later on, but this is adding the highlights where they should be. We're going for a bit of a chrome effect, so we're using a darker colour and a pure silver as well. Just following the natural curves of the tribal, trying to make a highlight in the middle of them, a little bit of reflective light down the bottom, and then we'll have highlights on the top as well. And as we work behind the uh, outer part of the flame, we'll also add a bit of a shadow effect. This is the top highlight, center highlight. Just basically following the contours of the flames and you gotta try and visualize where the light is gonna be reflecting off. Also on something this size, rather than using your wrist or your elbow as a, as a, as a compass, you, you actually can be using your whole body. Sort of working the mechanics of the body uh, to, with the airbrush itself. Not a bad idea to keep a tack cloth on you, especially on this dimension outside, you're, you're going to be picking up a lot of uh, overspray. You're constantly chasing the overspray. So coming through with a highlight here. You see how it brings it alive. That's makes it gives it a cylindrical appearance. Right now we're coming to the detail on the skull. I've got a a uh, piece of paper with a pounce pattern that I've made to transfer it from one side to the other. Uh, pounce patterns where you use a pouncing tool to perforate holes in the in the paper and you come back and you can either use uh, builder's chalk or I'm just going to airbrush through on this one. And it just gives you a faint outline of the design and a bit of a guide where to go to so you can come back and freehand everything. Here I go spraying through the perforations in the pounce design, transferring them onto the onto the trailer, onto the piece of work that we're using. Spraying through our pounce design, getting the eye in, eyebrow, getting the cheekbone, come back through, do the teeth. Right, we'll remove that design. You can see, a, you can just see how the uh, design's transferred through. There we have it. Very light. Once we come in and freehand, you're not going to see any of that afterwards, so we just follow those lines now with the airbrush. Start sketching in every, everything, all the detail. Just sketching in the detail. You get an outline of everything happening, then we can come in with our shadows and highlights and create the 3D image that we're after.
and it's restarting on the eye. A little bit of a bother going around that switch plate, but sometimes you can't plan the design around the obstacles. Something of this dimension, you're not really going to notice the switch plate in the finished. We're not going to colour in the eye fully on this job. We're going to uh, we're going to end up putting a, a ghost image of the company logo, the H Huntington Beach Body Works company logo in the eye. It's a little bit subliminal. Bit of masking around our hard edges that we're going to put in there. Got to keep some continuity with the design. Just a bit of back masking. Actually cutting out on the blue fine line tape here. I'm not I'm not using a knife on the on the graphic itself. So we've backmasked everything on the skull that we need to uh, add the shadow areas. So using a darker colour, I'm pulling pulling the uh, background into the back of uh, our painting. Using shadow and reflections, keeping that metallic theme alive. We remove our out, outer masking and we'll come back and do some more work freehand there later. Right now we're shading the cheekbone where it turns into the tribal flame. Getting some shadows and some reflections in there. Also, like to do a little bit of a, a darker tone behind the highlight up top, just helps with the uh, giving it a round appearance. I like to jump around a bit on a painting, not not so much concentrate on one area at a time. It stops you from getting too bored on one area, and it also helps to even out the details so you don't overwork one area and then get loose in another. This line I'm working on now is just like a, it's like a reflective horizon line. Giving the cheekbone there just some contour. All the shadow areas of the teeth done. Now we come back and work on the dome of the skull, creating, as I say, another horizon line area. This would be where the horizon line is reflected onto chrome. The horizon line will always be about a third of the way up from the bottom of your piece. So as you come around a corner you have to finish it in one way or another, have it disappear where the, where the reflection will change to the top. Now we're just masking out where the uh, tribal axe is a horn coming back through the skull. We give that a bit of a solid appeal around there. There's a combination of masking and airbrushing, freehand airbrushing. I don't, I don't believe there's any rules. You can, 
you can uh, use stencils, you can use freehand, whatever works for you. And, and each piece is, is different, you know. You can um, use different techniques for different effects. Come back with a paintbrush if you like, if it works for you. Some techniques you're going to use a wire brush to scratch things up, sandpaper, all sorts of different things. It doesn't take much around a hard edge to get that edge to find, so you, there's no need to overwork around it. To try and avoid getting a, your painting streaky, I like to have my paint fairly well reduced and come back with lots of light coats. If you try to put it on too heavy, it's just going to look blotchy and as if you've done it with a spray can. taken a photo from the other side and printed it out just to give me a guide on how I'd had painted the other side, try and get the two looking even. See how we're adding the highlights that give that real chrome effect. Now we're weeding out the company logo, the Huntington Beachbody logo, which we've cut out on our vinyl cutter. This is uh, using spray mask, which is a low, low tack masking, particularly for spraying around. Lots of fun weeding out the small letters, fawn on my side. All right, now we're just going to put it on them. Going to spray around it, create a shadow area, just just something pretty subtle. It's not going to stand out. We're going to Use a candy over top, a couple of candies. Having to cut it around the light switch plate. Having to cut it around the electrical output. Squeezing it down nice and firm, trying to make sure there's no bubbles in it. Gently removing the transfer paper. Right, now we're just going to do some airbrushing. Airbrush out the name, Huntington Beach Body Works. And a shadow effect under the under the logo. Now we're just hazing it out in the background a little bit to, to pull the logo forward.
Here we go. Removing the centerpieces, Huntington Beach Body Works. The Rich Evans Signature Series. Once we've completed that step, now we're going to come back with our candy. Using a pagan gold to start with, and then coming just around the uh, front part of the eye, then coming back with a brandy wine and fading it into the, just giving it a nice glow, red to orange glow. Looks a bit dry and dusty at this time, but once the clear hits it, that'll look nice and deep, transparent. Okay, Terry's just got done uh, applying his last little bit of artwork, and I'm going to go around it with some inner clear, SG100 it's known as, to seal the artwork so that uh, if we're going to do any taping on top of the uh, the art, it's not going to pull any of the metallic. So it just it basically protects the art. And now after we apply this one coat of SG100, we'll go ahead and peel the paper and right just adding a drop shadow to help uh, lift the piece off the trailer if we didn't drop shadow it it would look like a, a big sticker stuck on there because of all the hard edges so this just helps create the illusion that it's part of the trailer really so sort of lifts it off the trailer makes it look like it's floating along next door to the trailer let's start with fairly reduced paint and just build it up if you make a missed stroke and you've, you've just done light strokes and you can usually get around it and cover it up without having to paint it white again underneath. And here's our finished product. Terry's just finished applying the, uh, the shadow effect and I'm going to go ahead and go back to the uh, SG100 which is known as inner clear and apply one coat to that whole surface area to pretty much re-wet the paint surface. After applying the uh, SG100, I'm going to go ahead and use the Cosmic Clear with the KU150 hardener and I'm going to apply three coats of clear. I'm going to be using the SADA Jet 2000 Digital and I use a 1.4 tip I'm going to be starting in the front of the trailer, starting at the bottom corner, and working my way up at about a four foot section. And I'm going to overlap at about, I'd say 60, 60 to 70% on this trailer, because I need it to really be wet, because we have the rivets, so we want to stay away from a high build on the rivets, and we want to stop in the middle of the rivets at our strokes. So you don't want to overlap the rivets, because it'll actually give you runs on the rivets, and they're, they're hard to get out. So with a four foot stroke from top to bottom. So if I, I work my, my way up to the top and then I'll bring myself back to prevent the dry look. And it keeps everything wet as I'm going. So from front to rear, three coats. And we're ready to ship this thing without buffing. A little bit hard, I hit it with a little bit of high air pressure. And I try to get my gun a little close and you gotta move, move fairly quick but you gotta watch what you're doing. Some of the techniques we use is a, is a cross method as well after hitting the top surfaces. And, and that way, you know, longer strokes are always better. Keeping keeping the surface wet really, really keeps the, the sandpaper moving good and, and you really want to move that material off of there, especially in the art area. Back and forth, you know, never be in a, never be in a hurry. Take your time, watch what you're doing, applying even strokes and keeping the block in the sandpaper is key to getting a final finish. And we'll use a wool pad for cutting, 3M compound, 3M polishing as well as, well as changing our pad to a foam pad. Then we'll change the pad again and use the swirl free another step and then quite a few different steps different methods different people back with another speed glaze end results are everything so this is where the final product comes out and this is what everybody's gonna see everybody's not gonna see the steps in between 
in results here. Project's coming together. So assembly, assembling the hood back together and finishing a piece of the project.
about trying to hurry it. Yeah. Just go through the steps, make sure they're right.